Welcome to another quick tutorial where we are learning all the different elements of Color Pro plugins. And in this particular video, I'm going to take you through this amazing new tool called Grain Lab version 3.0. In this video, I'm going to show you um, an overview of basic uh, functions available to you inside the Grain Lab. And as a comparison, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using um, a, basically a shot that's using standard DaVinci Resolve tools like Color Space Transform and a film grain. And I decided to use the default value, the 16 millimeter grain that I just enhanced a little bit like this. And then I'm just going to basically turn it on and off. Um, let's go and have a look at it at waveform monitor. Usually it's best visible like this. And if I'm going to zoom in a little bit more into it, we're going to be able to see, yes, there is a really like a 16 millimeter texture available to us there. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm uh, basically creating just a simple node tree where I'm using an inode um, to select my black magic gen 5 just a quick cdl adjustment and then an o node where i'm saying hey i am going to use aris um, odt even though i'm working with black magic i just like it much more because you see if i was to use like a let's say this is the rcm setting right it kind of you know has a like a you know look like this but if i'm kind of going to use ari setting i just find that skin looks a little bit better and and you know the whole image just gets you know much nicer look anyway so um then i'm going to apply a little uh, uh grain lab plugin here in between right and as you can tell i'm also using Using just a standard the first setting available to me um, and yes you can tell on the waveform it is visible there and when I zoom into it you'll see the texture is there but it is much finer right so look if I go now to this shot here this is your texture um, from film grain and this is your texture from Grain Lab, and you will be able to say that they are actually significantly different. And I'm just going to explain to you a little bit why this is happening and why we are seeing these differences. Okay. So first of all, let's go. I'm going to go just zoom in a little bit like this so that we have a better overview and we can see better what's happening. Okay. So first of all, Grain Lab operates here in this camera selection is, is your color space that you're going to be working with. So because I like to color manage everything using JP Log 2, um, mm. this is a setting that I uh, have selected here. And whatever you select here, this is going to be on input and output. It doesn't matter. So basically, the Grain Lab won't do any color conversion. It will just adapt itself depending to what color space you're using. And there is an array of options, you know, different cameras. You can even use it in um, DaVinci wide gamut in different ACES spaces and so on. So you basically really like, you know, have all the options available to you um, that you normally, you know, are, are able to find in any other color management systems. Okay. Here is the preset values. So B stands for blend and for new uh, negative and P for print. And then the number next is, is intensity. And then the other two numbers are telling me how much green I have in highlight, how much in midtone. And then we also then have these numbers T and three, which is going to tell me if I have any gate weaver or something like that included in it. But I'm going to go now and manually start step by step showing you really what, what is available. Okay, so I'm going to disable the print grain first, right? And I'm also going to disable the 3D grain first. So because I just want you to focus um, now only on my negative grain. So I'm going to use like a, let's say 35 millimeter grain. And you see like how fine this grain is already, right? It is because the negative grain is much finer. It's, it's much more sensitive like a to detail, you know, then like a print grain. Okay. But you can go like a from, you know, like a very rough, let's say eight millimeter grain, which is going to go and go like completely crazy to 65 millimeter grain, which is almost invisible. Like, you know, you really like, you know, you can't even tell, right. That there is a grain there, even though there is, but it's just such a fine texture. Okay. I'll stick with 35 right so this is my kind of you know 35 grain and then this setting here over sampling so what is that so this is a technique that existed in film scanning for a while 
Um, and this is a way where we scan each frame more than once and then we blend those separate scans together. And when we do that, we are able to reduce the visible appearance of grain. Okay, so look, it reduces the signal to noise ratio. So when I have, like when I enable oversampling, look what happens. So the grain texture becomes much finer. Okay, but if I look at it onto my scopes, look, I am still able to see the grain. So like, see on my on my waveform monitor, if I turn it on and off, I can still see the full amount of grain. Okay, but perceptually, right, it's not so intense. It's not so visible, right? Sometimes you want your grain to be there for viewers to feel that there is texture there, but not so much to de-age the movie, to make it like a look an old film. No, we want sometimes just to have enough texture, right? And this texture just needs to live there without necessarily being too much in our face. I'm going to stick with this 35. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a print grain. And this is really where Grain Lab is unique. It allows you to blend different grain textures together. It goes from ultra fine to heavy, right? So you see that the, the print grain is much difficult, different in, in a shape and, and, and size, and it feels really different simply because the print stock is just made from such a material. And I can go from really the finest to like a very, very strong. Let's say I'm going to use this strong setting, right? And you can see like, you know, like, a, you know, now with a print stock, I'm layering, I'm blending grain together. And that has a wonderful effect. Because you see on my on my on my waveform monitor now, if I turn it on and off, you see there is a, like actually a quite a big amount of texture visible, but not so prominent um, inside our screen. You see, it doesn't really go too much into your face, and it because it blends itself one on top of another, right? Okay, I can also here control how much of this texture I want depending on my um, uh, frequency. So basically, like, you know, if I'm on a high frequency, low frequency, or mid frequency, I can decide how much of that grain I want. Okay. And then this is another trick that you, you know, have not seen so far, it's called the 3D mix. So what is that? In order for us to be able to understand the 3D mix, right, what I need to do is I need to show you something here, which is actually the vectroscope. Okay, so what I got here is a grayscale image. Okay, and on that grayscale image, I have applied this particular film grain, 16 millimeter film grain. Okay, and you can tell, like, if I turn the grain on and off, there is nothing happening here. There is no color information inside. Okay. But here I have a grain lab. Okay. And what you can notice here straight away, well, wait, the grain lab actually has got the color information because yes, grain does have color. You know, it has to have color because it, it works in different emulsion layers, right? So if I see, if I disable it, then I'm behaving like a normal grain that you have, you know, with all the other emulations. But here I'm able to control how much of cyan I want, how much of magenta I want, and how much of yellow I want. Now, why do we do this? The ultimate reason why we ever want to do this and why we ever want to like introduce the 3D grain is you can tell like look at my look at my like a vectroscope here I'm going to go and just enable and disable it it just blends much more naturally because you know these emulsions you know the colors they feel like that the grain is part of them not sitting on top of them because you see this is your standard kind of you know grain and you can kind of tell like okay yes you know like there is some grain there and it like you know but look when i show you like with the 3d option the grain feels much more to be part of the texture of the film. And that's incredibly important. It's important that we don't really emulate grain as an effect that sits on top of it, but something that actually is part of an image. It's embedded in the image. Okay, on top of that, what I can do is I can actually go and use a gate weaver and a flicker. Now, they are very subtle, so don't expect that you're going to now see like, you know, some crazy stuff happening. But if I just play this, you'll see that your image 
just has a very tiny, tiny movements. So now if I disable them, like look, if I disable Flickr and Weaver and I press play again, you see you won't be able to see that fine movement anymore. So basically, this is like a, another way how we are introducing a subtle dithering, really, where we are enabling, you know, like a, m additional, you know, pixel modulations for in every frame that feel a little bit more um, like really shot on film. But if you don't want it, if you say, no, no, I, I, I like, I like the, 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 you know, precision of a digital camera, just disable them and you just work the way you want to work. And then you have a, the master control here to control overall, you know, how much of that green do I want? Do I want a lot of it or a little bit less of it? Once you design your texture, once you build your texture, then you can go and decide how well you want to blend it. And you really agree that the amount of, you know, that the, the quality of that blend, you know, is just, is not significant. This is your standard film grain, no color, feels a little bit like something that sits on top. And then you have a grain lab, which kind of really embeds itself into your original image and makes it look absolutely wonderful. So yeah, this is a quick overview. We're going to do more tutorials like this, where I'm going to explain you like lots of interesting, you know, ways how you can utilize um, this tool to your advantage. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe as we will be publishing more of tutorials like this. And if you have any specific questions or you'd like to see something you haven't seen before, just please put it down in comments below.